Hello and welcome. My name is Barnabas. How are you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. It's a Friday evening here in Melbourne and um, I just want to um, uh, be able to say hi. Sorry, I haven't made a, a video in a while and uh, just because I've been busy at work, but uh, we're doing fine. Hey, there's lots of shows, uh, wonderful things lined up for this coming weekend, uh, starting tomorrow. So watch out for those ones. But before we head to the weekend, uh, I just wanted to um, talk to you about something. Yesterday, after work, I just went home and uh, I, I, I was just sitting down and thinking, we have come a long way. We have really come a long way. And uh, sometimes it's just good to sit down and reflect of what the Lord has enabled us to achieve. Uh, I've had lots of uh, uh, milestones in my life. You know, when I, I went to high school, when I finished, uh, when I graduated from college, when I got married, my first job, and lots of things that has happened. But one of my favorite was when I got to move to my own place. Uh, should I call it my own house or just my own room? I don't know. Uh, but it was a small, tiny uh, room in a place called Kisumundogo. Those who have uh, lived in, uh, in uh, Donholm or those who live in Donholm know where Kisumundogo is. It's a crowded uh, place. Um, there's lots of small, tiny houses um, in that place. Uh, but then uh, when I got to move to my, this place, I moved only with a bed and a mattress and uh, a, f a few utensils and uh, one stove that I was given by uh, my, my dad. Um, it was sentimental because this stove, uh, dad used it before he got married. So it's a, it was a very old but very reliable uh, stove was you would uh, pump it and then uh, you know um, prick some something on it and then it will work and dad taught me how to use it was very good so I used um, I, I moved in with this stove um, I, I moved in with a bed mattress and just a few uh, pans to cook and uh, a few utensils and I was so excited because um, I'd, I'd finally moved to my place. And then at that time, I was already uh, one of the choir members in the local church where, where I went. And um, one of the, sun, the Sundays, I invited the, the team, the choir team, to, to come and visit me in this tiny place, this tiny room, just one room. I had no furniture. I was just a bed. So all of this team, this, this big team of choir members, majority were ladies. Um, they came over one Sunday afternoon and, um, and most of them sat on the floor and a few could find space sat on my bed. And we made noise, we had a good time and uh, we cooked ugali, uh, sukuma wiki and, uh, and beef stew. I remember we would cook um, we cooked uh, vegetables first, and we cooked um, the, the beef stew, washed the sufuria, and cooked the ugali finally. And, and uh, we served ourselves, had that lunch, and we had a wonderful time singing and um, just chatting and having a good time. Uh, I really didn't care whether we had no room, no furniture, no entertainment, we made entertainment for ourselves. We just had a wonderful time. But most, <laughs> most memorable was when the ladies finished cooking and they, they put the stuff off, um, the whole house was full of smoke. And I remember laughing and crying at the same time because of the effect of the smoke on our eyes. And um, <laughs> it was, was crazy. But we had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time that day. After they left um, and I came back to the house that evening, I laid on the bed and I 
continued crying. Uh, one, because uh, the effect of the smoke was still there, but also I kept crying because I remembered what God has done in my life. I remember that just a few uh, months ago, I had no place to sleep. At some point, I had to sleep in a bus for uh, a while. If you know Kayole and you know that route, there were some buses, the green buses at uh, Wood Plight number 19. And so um, one of the buses, I had a driver who was my relative. So I would come from college, uh, wait for the bus in town, get the bus ride to Kayole, and uh, asked to wash the buses. After washing the buses, cleaning the buses, uh, I would uh, sleep in there. I, I would wash the bus to get the pocket money and then sl sleep in there. I was still going to college. I was still part of the choir in my church. Uh, and uh, it was tough sometimes because remember uh, July, and, uh, July and August are uh, the coldest season in Nairobi. And sometimes it rains and it's really wet and it find me in the bus. But we didn't give up. I continued believing that one day I would find a place. And when this time happened, that I finally found a bed to sleep in and a place to call my own, it was a big, big achievement for me. Why am I talking about all this? You know what, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we get our focus to just keep on chasing things that are ahead of us without stopping and looking behind and seeing where we have come from. If you can stop and look behind and see what God has already done in your life, you would really thank God. You would really thank God. There's a song that says, count your blessings and name them one by one. It will surprise you to see what God has done. And so I know, I know we still believe in God for great things, which he is going to do because he's not a liar. If he said he will do it in our lives, he will surely do it. But it's good also to stop and just look behind and see what he has already done. If God doesn't do anything else from now, he has already done enough. And that's a reason to just thank him. So if you find yourself discouraged, if you find yourself giving up, please stop and look behind you and you will see where you've come from and you'll have a reason to thank the Lord. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what God has done. Okay? Till next time, this is Barnabas the son of encouragement.